As the whole concept of the bisque bathing beauties became really, really popular during this time, they also started to make half dolls out of bisque with the nude bodies as the half dolls had. And I have two examples to show you here that I thought were quite unusual. Number one, the chocolate lady trend continue. And here we have this wonderful lady, her head haughtily lifted upward. She has a mohair wig and that became to be more popular, again, part of the whole bathing beauty movement of most of the bathing beauties had mohair wigs, particularly styled for them. And this one has her not only original wig, but her black original headband at the front of her forehead. And she's still serving chocolate though. She's still serving cocoa. So we still have the serving woman in her role. On the other side to her, let me just show you her back by the way, so you can see her all the way around. See how well detailed she is. Standing next to her, her smaller friend is a very, very beautiful woman. Um, she again is a little more buxom, more like the 18th century ladies. And she's holding a book, not a flower, she's holding a book. But what I wanted you to notice in particular, because I'm about to show you something else, is her necklace. That's a rare factor. You very, very seldom would find that. So the manufacturer went one extra step and made a necklace of gold and blue beaning. And that's the kind of thing you want to look for when you're choosing half dolls and trying to get something a little bit different. Well, not only did the posing, the style of the body, the more slender body, the uh, 1920s style of woman a change, but so did the costuming. And we had a whole series of half dolls that were introduced that were showing very fashionable costumes of the 1920s. When you're looking at them, notice, for example, the different colors that are now appearing, the, the purples and the oranges and the bright blues. Some of them continue from the 18th century fashions, but they have their very definite uh, flapper error kind of mode. And I put five of them out here that I think are absolutely wonderful. If you recall a minute ago, I showed you one representing an 18th century lady that had a necklace. And now I wanted to show you this one. Many of the flapper ladies are not wearing jewelry at all. They're very, very, very simplistic. Um, but in this particular instance, she has a wonderful necklace. So that's a great added bonus for her. Let me show you the back of her. You can see the continuation. I like the way her decoration on the collar and the cuffs is kind of semi-repeated and her matching cloche hat, which has the lattice work decoration. Her friend next to her in the purple with the extended arms has a wonderful backward pose of her head, her arms fully extended, and beautiful color designs on the hat and the jacket, which are designed to be complementary. And look at the, again the green front of the bodice matching the green upward brim of her hat and that long purple tie. Anyone studying fashion would instantly know how really accurate these costumes are presented to what were being worn at the time. We have another wonderful lady here. And now this lady, by the way, she's no longer holding a flower. She's holding her purse. She's got places to go, things to do. Different, the 20th century um, new woman all right, and what I liked about her is, look, gloves. She's wearing gloves. She has a wrapped collar that matches the trim on her jacket. She has the fitted cloche cap with a little um, upward turned brim with lattice painting and the little extra decoration on it. Very, very wonderful study of costume of the period and very accurately done. Let me show you her back. I like the fact that there's a little, like a little bit of curl peeking out from under the cloche, just the way the hat would have been worn. And even the gloves have the defined um, black stitching on the back of the gloves. Very beautifully done. And then we have another girl here. And this was a kind of a theme that was repeated in the, both the 18th century models and the 20th century models holding their pet. And here we have the woman holding her little pet dog. And a lot of collectors, that's what they'll do is they'll pick on a particular theme. Well, I'm going to collect a half dolls of people holding pets or holding dogs. Uh, there's a whole line of them. I think there's like five of them in the Lady Fancies part two of women in different style costumes with a bird perched on their arm, their pet bird that they're obviously teaching to speak or the bird might be teaching them something, I don't know. But that's a, these are kind of trends that continue to follow. And here, again, with her wonderful costume, and she's showing, look at the dramatic makeup on her face, and she's showing her dog, 
her pet dog. And then another beautiful girl with a very, very different kind of costume, a uh, color costume, in that bright burnt orange with her little um, uh, coral, not coral, but um, I guess like a burnt sienna gloves and the wrapped collar fur and on the, around her neck and the cuffs. So very, very fashionable ladies and a lot of people like collecting the half dolls that are showing ladies wearing flapper costumes. And this is a tricky part because you're starting to get into the area where very, very, um, where there's a less luxurious level of half dolls being made. These are from the luxury era. And when you start to collect uh, this era of doll, you want to really look at their faces and look at the costumes and make sure you're getting a really good quality one, which all of these are. They're wonderful. So laughter reigned in the early part of the 20s. It was a fun time. And what more could express it than half dolls that were at a party, that were festive, that were just showing funny, amusing kind of scenes. And we have many wonderful examples. Here we have, she is seated on a jar. Again, the lid lifts off for access to the interior of it. And her skirt is a pincushion as well. So you have her performing a double function here as far as functionality. But isn't she just happy to look at? Look at her. She is so stylistic of the period with her painted blue mask, her yellow bobbed hair, a cap, and her arms like she's blowing kisses to the crowd. And she has her porcelain legs with gold heeled shoes. And let me turn her around. This is made with such carefulness that even her skirt is not just posed on the lid of the jar, but there's a pillow on the lid. So the whole jar looks like it is a cushion. This is a wonderful piece. An example to all of the ingenuity that half dial makers were going to, to, to try to present different type of pieces. Many of you collect bathing beauties, and we have a whole collection of the nude, nude bisque bathing beauties in this auction. And I wanted to show you some that you might, one that you probably haven't seen very often because it is a porcelain one made with really nice quality. But when I turned it around, look at her bathing cap. Isn't that interesting? It's a fitted blue bathing cap with blue polka dots. And when it comes around again, you can see it has a blue brim on it which matches the blue brims on her shoe, blue, her blue shoes. Very, very different kind of style. A, a, just a fun, great piece and something different for those of you who are looking for different things always. Now, I wanted to show you these little five that are being offered in one lot because, again, it's an example of different novelty pieces that started uh, to be made. And look at each of these saucy little um, designed to go, you could have put them on many, many pieces. They could have gone on top of a little tiny pin cushion. They could have been attached to a little box, a little candy box. So many possibilities of these, but so many different things were being done. And let me just turn them all so you can get a backward look at them too. So you can see that the painting and decoration. Oh, I love them. I love that one with the striped detail. And I'm the black haired and the blonde haired are identical, except for color painting. And the black haired one has black straps. And she's wonderful with her painted jewelry. And then this is one of my favorite pieces in the entire collection. I think this is so imaginative, is she's nude, but no, she's not. So a, a, a flapper lady with her bob brown hair. But if you're going to look deep closely, when I turned around the back, you're going to see that it's not just a tight bob. It's kind of like curled up and it's got some little detail on it. And she is holding up her purple halter in front of her otherwise naked bodice. And then there is jewelry extended around her waist. She has green earrings, a green bracelet, so much detail on this that when you first look at it, you don't see, and then you have to keep studying it and you see. And let me show you the front of her again. Tilt it back so you can see how beautifully her face is painted as well. This is a wonderful half doll here. Let me go like that. I think she has a lot of spunk and she's, she's a sassy lady. And one other lady from the fashionable period um, here, seated on her original um, pin cushion uh, base with her black fitted cloche wrapped with yellow ties. 
very, very stylish. To me, she almost looks like she's sitting on her luggage waiting for the train to arrive, and she's going to catch that train to Paris. Black dress outlined in yellow, very wonderful detail on this little diminutive piece, but just great with her original legs. Nothing would seem to say the 20s so much as Les Folies or the Perrault figures or the Harlequin figures uh, that were at the show at the Moulin Rouge or all over theaters all over Paris. So what could be better for the whole half doll presentation than Perrault and the Harlequin? And a number of extraordinary pieces were made, very often more than one part. And um, over here I have this wonderful clasping the hands with the very dramatic spit curls on the face and designed as a lamp cover. It doesn't seem like it's large enough to have been a tea cozy, but a lamp cover or a dresser box. And then you could hide all of the mess on your dressing table by having these wonderful figures that you put on top of them. A great piece. I'm holding in my hand what appears to be a one piece figure. Let me see, do I have the legs the right way? This way is where they should be because the legs are actually a powder puff. So powder would be in the bowl that is the bottom of her skirt. You dab the powder puff in there and powder your face. Porcelain legs and she is balanced on the back of the kneeling Perot. And let me turn it around so you can see her from all sides. Many people specialize in just collecting these different Perot figures and you could, and there are so many of them, they're all so wonderful. All right, and then we have another wonderful example of Perot balancing the Harlequin on his knee and her skirt is, look at that, a pincushion. So very, very nice. She has her hands clasped in a traditional pose and he's gazing up at her. He has his very dramatic um, classical ruffled collar and ruffled cuffs. Let me turn him all the way around. And she is a separate half doll, understand. She's not part of the whole porcelain figure. She is a separate half doll. The figure actually is the Perot and the legs. And then she is the pincushion attached to the half doll, which is resting on her legs. Wonderful piece. And then the couple sometimes went canoeing. I guess they went to Venice and they were canoeing. Um, and here they are. And he is posed one piece. He's one piece with the boat. But she is, we have her attached now, but she again is a powder puff a half doll with a powder puff base seated in the boat and the boat would serve as a base for powder and then you would use her as a powder puff and powder yourself. And I think it I can understand why no one would have used it because it's too beautiful just as a figure in itself. Wonderful detail of painting. Uh, what is it? It's a gondola, is that what it's called? And he's even holding the, um, the oar in his hand. Beautiful piece. And then I have one final piece to show you, which is the, a rare double figure of the time period. A lot of argument again who this might represent. Is it Valentino, for example? Well, we're not sure, but it is a double figure. These two pieces are molded to model together, and he is um, has the classic black the Valentino look, let's call it that way. And she has the Theta Barra look with the brown bobbed hair and the blue headband with gold trim. And they are seated together in the dancing pose with a magnificent powder puff attached to them with their arms exposed and the porcelain legs extended below. A wonderful piece. I very happy to be able to have shared some of these half dolls with you from this upcoming auction. There are 350 lots and about 500 pieces in this auction. And I hope you can all be here to see it when we are going to show, we'll show each one of them as we offer them for presentation. And you can view them online on our website right now at theriaults.com. 
we hope you enjoy it. I had a great time showing them to you and I hope I might have, I know that if you already collect, you already know how wonderful they are. And I, if you haven't started collecting these, maybe I've opened your eyes to how some of these might fit well within your own collection. Thanks very much for tuning in.